Chris here, and I want to welcome everybody back to Offshore Week. Um, so today I am joined by Rick Villay Jr. from Chesapeake Whalers Town, and uh, of course our buddy Mike here from Anglers. So today we're going to talk about fishing on a small boat. So we're doing this offshore seminar, but it's really geared towards us small boat guys. Um, and so we brought our, our buddies in from Whaler Town to talk about fishing from a small boat. You guys have some experience, you've done some tournament fishing, some fun fishing on some of your boats. Um, and we're just going to talk about kind of utilizing what little space you have. And, and these things are pretty roomy, yep. even though they are small. Yep. Um, so we're going to do a short video here to talk about just some rod placement, how to work the boat. We're going to go over some of the basics of like your outrigger, which way is the long rigger, which one's the short rigger, where do I put the right rod? I mean, that stuff can be kind of confusing for us you know, that are new to it. So um, come along and let's, uh, let's have some fun. So we all fish on small boats. Uh, Mike, you do some, some offshore fishing with uh, a buddy of yours. Tell us about the kind of setup that you guys are running. So we're running a mid-30s uh, center console. Um, we're running usually six to eight rods, depending on the day. Um, but that's yeah, pretty much it, a lot of 50s and 30s. Okay, all right, yeah. Obviously, you're running some small boats, you guys are selling them. So uh, talk about kind of like your basic, in general, spread and, and how, you know, the kind of boats that you're fishing with. Yeah, so everything that I'm fishing or that we're fishing, uh, really between 33 and 38 feet, uh, outboard powered, so we want to be mindful of what we're doing with the outboards and what we're fishing around those outboards too. Uh, but we'll fish between six and eight rods. That's right, that's, that's right in the same realm of what we're doing. Depends on sea conditions, how things are reacting, um, and really what the fish are reacting to. Uh, but we'll certainly incorporate a uh, wide variety, whether it depends whether you're fishing artificial or natural baits, uh, for one, how you're going to tease those fish in. And we'll talk a little bit about that um, as we move to the back of the boat. But certainly all of that's going to be important on how you target them, how you fish them, and what you're fishing throughout the boat. Yeah, absolutely. You brought up some really good points. You know, I too fish on some smaller boats, and I don't get to fish as much as I want because on a smaller boat, you do kind of have to pick your days. Yeah. Um, but it's not impossible. I mean, I've seen guys out there in some boats that I probably would never go out in. So obviously, safety is number one. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the guys that I fished with, you know, in the 30 foot range, I've fished on a few boats that were, you know, in the upper 20s, you know, and maybe not have gone out as far, but it's definitely doable in a smaller boat to fish offshore like that. So um, let's head down to the cockpit and let's talk about rod placement and, and some other good stuff, right? Sounds great. Cool. So let's talk about rod placement. Um, we talk about these terms, I mean, it's natural to us because we do offshore fishing, but you got your long rigger, your center rigger, your shotgun position, flat lines. Where are all of these? What do these things do? So you've got your outriggers. Obviously, we've got this outrigger up here. Usually two, one on each side of the boat. Um, this is where I would run a long rigger position if I was on this boat. So it would go to the longest pulley that would go all the way out to the end of the rod, uh, the end of the outrigger. Your short rigger is going to be farther down. Go up to the second line on your outrigger. Yeah, and these things, there's different uh, release clips on the market. Uh, I believe these are the, the rubs, or they look similar to the rubs. Um, if you want to come in, you can take a look at these clips. So you'll open these up. They've got a tension spring on them. You're going to put the line in. You're going to close the clip. And then you just work that halyard out to where you want it to. And when the fish grabs the bait, it just pops out of the clip. So they work pretty well. There's a couple different ones on the market, but that's how those work there. Um, and you usually want to run these all the way out. Yeah, we might like creep them down a little bit here and there, but we want to get our spread spread out. That's the name. So what's the last one that we want to do here? Let's talk about flat lines. So where would you run your flat lines off of here? Typically right in um, a rod holder towards the back of the boat. A line typically closer to the bottom of the boat from a rod position here. Instead of the line coming from here going across the outboards, you have your line coming from the rod tip your flat line. So it gives a lower pull for your um, baits out the crop walk. Typically it's a good place to put heavier baits with tuna. Um, give a lower profile in the water. Now that's great. And I do the same thing. I run that flat line in that position and you get that bait jet back just beyond or just right around next to that prop wash. And that fish come in and they see that prop wash as your teaser and they see that big bait hanging out right next to it. That's perfect. So yeah, you want, you want that, pull, that lower pull point like you were talking about. So next I want to talk about uh, 
the uh, pitch bait. So pitch baits typically aren't in the water. They're not out in the spread, hence the name pitch bait. We're gonna pitch them back to the fish. And so this I'm typically doing with smaller billfish like white marlin. You can use a little outfit like this. And I wanna have some free rod holders that don't have anything in them that I can keep these in. Whether they're back here somewhere in the, in the uh, transom, or maybe if you've got extra rod holders in the gunnel, or even rod holders up on the stand like these where you can keep these readily available, ready to go, quick and easy to grab. Um, but I like keeping mine in the back, and here's why. I'm going to have a bucket on the floor that's going to have some salt water in it to pull right from the ocean. And that's where I'm going to store my bait. So I'm going to have my bait already on my circle hook. This is going to be here, and the bait's going to be in the bucket. And while we're standing here watching the spread, if I see a billfish come up, I'm immediately coming back, grabbing the bait out of the bucket, and I'm ready to toss it and feed that bait back to that billfish. So that's a really important thing to have this kind of ready to go. It's also nice because if we do get some tuna on or we get something else on, I can easily grab the bucket and the rod, move it out of the way, and help clear that spread. So we've talked about fishing on this boat, which is uh, considered a walk around. Let's, let's talk more about a center console, because you know, I think a lot of our customers fish on center consoles. So Rick, you fished on plenty of center consoles. In your, uh, you actually fished in the White Marlin Open this year on a center console, of Boston Whaler. We did. Uh, why don't you talk a little bit about kind of the spread that you had on that center console, how it differs from what we've been doing. Sure, and, and thank you, both of you. Fantastic points, and there's a lot of similarities between how you'll fish this boat in a center console. So what we're looking at today as far as the outriggers, as far as the flat lines, all of that stays the same. Um, from an organization perspective, it's paramount. Um, Rich, you mentioned some of the where you want your pitch bait um, when that billfish comes up. You really want to be ready. So being prepared is number one. Um, having a plan certainly something that's extremely important. So get your crew on the same page, get them focused, um, and you'll catch more fish at the end of the day. So, oh, yeah, absolutely. There's no question about that. Um, as far as the center console goes, you have 360 degrees around the boat, so you have a lot of access to move things forward. Uh, much more conducive as you hook up, as you clear rods, as you move things forward, uh, once you focus on one particular fish. You, wanna, you probably agree with this too, most of the time we're offshore, uh, you do want to fish for multiples, so don't be in too big of a hurry uh, to get those lines out of the water. Uh, see if you can get another one to kind of pile on on top. A um, couple things, what we did, uh, we fish very similar setups to what you see here today. So your 50s, your 30s, your TLDs, great lightweight rods. Uh, we had the ability, we call it a blue marlin on a 30. So these rods certainly, rods and reel combos certainly have the backbone to be able to handle big, strong, offshore fish. So uh, great setups there. Uh, with the pitch bait, uh, I do like to get that into a little bit of cleaner water on the outside edge. Uh, if we can do that because the bait will have a better opportunity to get further back quicker. So um, as we talk about that with outboard and, the, and kind of that backwash of those props, you want to make sure you get that bait back to that fish. Uh, one addition to what you see here and maybe a center console, we fished a 380 outrage. So a little bit bigger boat, but all this applies really 33 to 38. If you're fishing dredges, so you see a dredge um, back here on the port side corner. If you're fishing dredges, we normally use a boom out to that port side. So we'll use a boom that gets that out into some clearer water for us. Um, as we come in towards the transom, we'll normally fish another dredge off the corner, uh, maybe a, a black flap dredge, uh, something that's gonna be very visible. Uh, Mike and Rich both mentioned fishing some bigger baits as you get closer to the inside. So you fish a little smaller to the outside, it gets bigger so the fish can see that bait and see the action on that as you get closer to the boat. Uh, we found that to be extremely beneficial when we were offshore and raising fish. Uh, dredges are really, really gonna help you. Uh, one of the drawbacks of outboards, uh, you get a lot of that prop wash. So how you combat that is bigger baits closer to the boat, some dredges and teasers. So uh, those would be my major, uh, what worked for us, I should say, when we were out there. And uh, I, I think I just agree wholeheartedly on how you're fishing this boat. Yeah, so and you had mentioned dredges. I wanted to make a point of that. We've got this Fathom dredge. You know, there's a lot of dredges on the market nowadays that are designed for small boats. You know, when dredges first came out, they were great. They kind of were for, for billfish, and then the tuna guys adapted to them. Um, you know, and these things can get really big around. They can get really long. 
but these smaller dredges are very effective. They definitely bring fish in. They will work for tuna, they will work for marlin, they will work for all the species that we're going after. But these smaller sizes, you'll notice when I pull this dredge in, like you said, you're gonna have that boom rod. When I'm when I've got a fish on, I need this out of the way and bring that in. I can just bring this right over the side, and I can throw it right down here in the corner, and it's really not taking up any space. There's no hooks in it, so I can step on it if I have to. I mean, they're, they're pretty pliable baits they're going to hold up. Uh, but yeah, that, that's a, a really nice feature of these smaller dredges. Just really small and out of the way. And they'll, they'll even do it just a bucket dredge all together. So yeah. you can see the smaller end of there, you can drop that right into their design to fit right into a five-gallon bucket. Yep. So yep. again, kind of ties back to organizing your boat, making sure you're keeping things clear as you work a smaller cockpit than some of these big expresses and sport fish. Yeah, so. yeah absolutely. And you brought up a good point, you know, organizing your tackle. So we've talked about rods and reels, but uh, you know, each boat's a little different. So it's hard to talk about it in too much detail because your boat's different than your boat, and they're different than my boat, and so on. Uh, but you want to have a nice tackle station. Um, you want to have things at the ready. You're on fish. The last thing you want to be doing is going down to the cabin, going down to the center of the console, trying to find your crimpers, trying to find your line cutters. Where'd that pack of sleeves go? I need to redo this out because I got bit off. So you want to make sure you have that stuff at the ready, but you know you don't want to overload it either. You don't need your entire rigging kit. So uh, you know I'm a big fan of. I'm always wearing a pair of pliers when I'm offshore. I've always got my pliers on. I got that tool at my ready. Uh, but you want to have other stuff laying around that's, that's going to be easy to get to. So make sure you have a nice little tackle station. I think you guys on the uh, when you fished in the white white mile open, you were telling me that you had some pretty pretty. Uh, Nice little tackle setup there. Yeah, what we did, the 380 Outrage comes with a standard flip out table in the back portion of the boat, which really, I mean, you lay a nice beach towel on top of there. You can lay your lures. If you're if you're planning on changing some things over as light conditions change, colors change, um, and you want to be able to seamlessly switch out that spread. What we would do, lay that, lay that towel out on that table, have everything ready, have your crimps ready, uh, but not, not an excessive amount. You want to keep it simple, but you want to be ready. Just being ready is, is everything. Yeah, and that's a great tip. I like the towel idea. You know, things aren't going to roll off of a towel as easy as they would starboard or, or a teak covering board or something like that. Uh, so that towel is really going to help prevent things from rolling around. Uh, one tackle tip that we use, we take the small Gatorade bottles. And so we'll, we'll empty one, we'll put the lid on, we'll cut a hole in the top of that, and then we'll put our egg sinkers in there. So when we're rigging our ballyhoo, if we need an egg sinker, you just plop one out rather than opening a bag or reaching into a plano box where you're going to inevitably drop a bunch of them on the deck. It's easy to just pour them out and if you go too far, pour them right back in and get the one that you need. And that fits in any rod holder or any cup holder that's on the boat. So, you know, those little little things like that go a long way. Yeah, yeah. And if, if you're stowing your lures, I mean, a, a great six-pack lure bag, uh, get it so you can, you can clean your stuff at the end of the day, be ready the next day. Uh, all of that just helps you out there uh, when you're trying to get ready. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I've jokingly said during this and in the past, you know, I fish every day like it's a tournament. When I'm offshore fishing, you have to because, like you said, you get a fish on, there's other fish there. You've spent all day, you finally found them, there's other fish around, and things get chaotic quick. So being organized, having things easily at the ready, and, and you really hit on a good point, too, about the team working together. You know, you guys are a crew. You got the guy running the boat, you got the guy that's going to be on the rod, there's a guy that's going to wire the fish when it gets close. Everybody should be working together. It's your turn on the rod, you were wiring the fish, now I'm wiring the fish, and you're fighting it, you're going to gap it for me. And so working together as a team is really, really important. You need, you need, you need, yeah, that's, a, that's a really big thing, especially in a small boat where you're running into each other a lot. So. And isn't that why we do it, right? To have some fun with friends. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, exactly, so, uh, right. And it's more fun when you're catching fish than losing fish. We all know oh, that. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Because you never lift that fish down the lost. No, no. <laughs> well, very cool. Uh, well, thank you, Rick, for coming out. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate you having us. Um, take a look at this boat. Take a look at the setup here and uh, and enjoy it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, not a problem. The boat will be here all week and all uh, over the weekend, so feel free to stop by if you want to take a look at it. I do believe it's on the market, so if you're interested, definitely want to talk to Rick about uh, seeing that. And if you have any other questions about Boston Whaler or any other boats that might be on the market, definitely give them a call. Uh, Mike, thanks for coming in and uh, helping out with this, and uh, we hope to see you guys in the store. Remember to check out the website for any additional information, and uh, remember tomorrow we're doing our live broadcast uh, with the Ocean City Captains, a uh, bunch of different guys down there I'm going to be talking to about all these tactics and how they go after them. So uh, stay tuned, and uh, if you have any questions, send them in. Good luck, guys. Have fun.